if you are public officials voted into office or running for office, we welcome you to show up in your full human capacities. If the media approaches you, please direct them to us as we, our truth and voices must be the focus of this narrative we are crafting. We welcome you to build with us beyond this movement in sustainable ways. Truly nurture us and make investments in us as stewards of our collective futures. We hope that is now you can show up for us now and beyond. If you lead or work for a nonprofit or grassroots organization, we hope that you can be in the movement with us in your full human capacities and continue to build. One second, I'm getting sweat in my ass. <laughs> yes, Jerry, yes, yes, That's right. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take my time. <laughs> All right. We hope that you can be in the movement with us in your full human capacities and continue to build with us beyond this action to make Jackson and Mississippi destinations of human rights, racial justice, and economic justice. We hope that is how you can show up for us now and beyond. If you are a JPD officer, we urge you to see us as the collective conscience of our city. We ask that you inherently believe that black lives matter. And show up for us in such capacity. And if you are media, we demand that you engage in narrative work that is responsible and centering of black love patience, resistance, and rage. That's right, Darius. Our demand is that the stories you produce of us are devoid of anti-blackness and truly rooted and connected into the context of Mississippi's legacies of human and civil rights. We are leaning into our generational mission
How y'all doing today? Everybody good? Y'all got y'all some water, Gatorade from the back? Okay, so since y'all, you know, got your water, Gatorade, everything you quenched, I got a message for y'all. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Taylor Turnage, one of the co-organizers of today's peaceful protest. I hope everyone has safe travels to this largely anticipated occasion. I have a few questions for you all. Have you ever been felt or moved by a spirit that you just can't quite put into words? If your answer to this question was yes, then you're in luck. This means that you have felt that wonderful yet terrifying feeling of passion. If you answer no to this question, then maybe you have not yet found what your true passion in life is. In saying this, I will ask those of you who did say no to this question, why are you here today? Did you come because your friends were coming? Did you come because you thought it would be a fun experience? Or maybe, just maybe, you felt like there was an ongoing issue in not only Mississippi, but the rest of the country that you needed to do something about by any means necessary. I want y'all to think about that. Think about why you're here today. If your answer was that you needed to be here by any means necessary, then you may have just lit the flame that will help guide you to your passion. Passion is what keeps us up at night, what gets us out of bed in the morning, and it's definitely what brought us here today. So, y'all wanna know what my passion is? This right here, this right here is my passion. My passion brings me peace. This crowd brings me peace. Look around. I just want y'all to look around. We got people of all shapes, colors, sizes, ethnicities, backgrounds, everything. Here in this one place, in the place that they thought it couldn't happen. Calvin White. I uh, also serve as a co-organizer for the Black Lives Matter movement in Mississippi. 
personal, the most nerve-wracking task of, my, of today was my concern about ruining a good opportunity. I was aware about my message not being profound enough, and I have a statement that pops and catches the ears of the readers, reporters, and activists, and you all. And I have a portable beliefs that will be used 40 years from now in student civil rights essays. I thought about the best way to incorporate the experiences that I and others like me encounter daily into a protest and movement that challenges people from all walks of life to think about someone other than themselves. I thought, and I thought some more, I read the, the words of others who came before me. Then, it clicked. The best way to unify us all, to tie each of us together with a single communal thread, is to get each of you to think of only yourself. Which sounds like the literal opposite of this protest and movement. But the truth of the matter is, none of us can even begin to put ourselves in another person's shoes until we thought about how they feel on our feet. I'm young, I'm black, and I'm a man who lived in central Mississippi my entire life. I encountered racism early on in elementary school, but not just by being called the N-word, a tiny about the hue of the color of my skin, or black facial features, but with microaggressions, telling me that I'm so well spoken for a black kid, or different than the rest of my kind when I exhibit improper manners and etiquette. As the black son of a young, single, black mother, as the black son of a young, single, black mother, I watched my mama work herself to death day in, day out, and what do I can do as an adult to repay that debt? <sighs> to think these are the only parts of my black experience. As a former Clinton High School athlete, scholar, and musician, I was given the opportunity to experience varying levels of support. From then on, I graduated and got accepted to Alcorn State University. My college and countless other HBCUs were created in spite of racial injustice, but struggled to stay afloat and while still having to maintain academic excellence, which we have done since 1871. I say that to say, that everybody has a different experience when living through a not so post-racial American existence. Wow. This existence, each of ours, has nuances, twists, and turns, and plenty of detours, making everybody's experiences specific to them. But there are some common factors that some black Americans face daily. With that being said, I'd like each of you to face me and if it's at all possible to put up both hands, 10 fingers. Teachers and my fellow education majors know about learning style. Something about make, make this visual for y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But each of the following statements that I make, put one finger down if it applies to you. If it does not, stay where you are. Number one, I grew up with both parents in my household. Number two, I've never had to worry about where my next meal was going to come from. Number three, I constantly fear for my safety when I'm around law enforcement. Number four, I am a parent and I fear for my child's safety at school and everywhere else. Number five, I'm not sure if I have enough money to pay monthly or weekly bills. Number six, I'm not sure if I have enough money to attend college. Number seven, I'm worried that the color of my skin or the name on my job application will hurt my chances of being hired and making a decent living. Number eight, I attend or have attended 
a school that adequately prepared me to understand politics and important political happenings. Number nine, I'm active in political processes, including voting, and I feel safe at the polls when I cast my vote. Number 10, I believe that everyone in this nation is treated equally, regardless of color, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, religion, or otherwise. Woo! Keep them up. I'm not done yet. Okay. Okay. Now, I want everybody to keep your hands up and just look around a bit. In front, behind, both sides, yeah, and everything. This is only a small number of the issues that most black Americans are faced with on a daily basis. Now throw in slavery, Jim Crow, and the fact that black people in America have only been equal for about 55 years. I need mean, for every black person in the crowd to put two fingers down. This represents systemic racism. If COVID-19 didn't create enough distance between us, racial disparity widens the gap and establishes the vision between us all. Come on, say that. For my folks with at least six fingers still up, if you are not willing to put your life on the line to speak out on racial injustice and help in the fight against systemic racism by any means necessary with those who have less fingers, I will be the first, the first, the first I got my hands off. You all right, Kyle? Don't be a punk. I will be the first to say that this is not the movement for you. It is up to us, everybody around you, it's up to us to make a decision to consider everybody's lying test or fingers before we think, speak, or act impulsively. My youth, raise your hand. It's everybody under 25, I'm sorry. <laughs> to my youth, we are the future. Yeah. Say it with me. We are the future. It is our responsibility to ensure that each of us is safe, treated equitably, and our best foot is put forward in the name of love and justice. When Mississippi moves, America moves. Yeah. When America moves, the world moves. So we got to get moving. America is only as free as the people of Mississippi. And until our Black Lives Matter, we are not free. So I say it henceforth and forevermore, as y'all should say with me, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Good afternoon. I'm Rob Hill. I'm the state director of the Human Rights Campaign in Mississippi, and I can bring you greetings on behalf of HRC, the nation's largest LGBTQ civil rights organization working for the equality of LGBTQ people. And a reminder that LGBTQ people don't look just like me. We are as diverse as the fabric of our country. We are black, we are white, we are Muslim, we are Christian, we are immigrants, we are citizens. And HRC stands in solidarity in affirming the truth that black lives matter. June, as many of y'all know, is Pride Month. And we remember today that the LGBTQ movement for equality was started by trans women of color who stood up in cities all across this country, standing up to police brutality and injustice. But as we celebrate pride, we know that there cannot be pride full, for real, in truth, until everybody is free and everybody feels safe. When we see injustice, we must speak out, and that's why I'm here today. We must speak out as strongly as we can. Otherwise, we are complicit in oppression uh, uh, complicit in oppression. 
Yeah, sorry. And we've seen a lot of oppression. We've seen a lot of injustice recently. From George Floyd, to Ahmaud Arbery, to Breonna Taylor, to Christian Cooper, to Nina Pop. We've seen a lot, too much. The LGBTQ community is familiar with fighting against systems of power that are set to serve the privileged few. And we are united in the fight to, against the systems that target our black and brown siblings today. No justice. Me. No justice. Me. Thank you. We as the home of the free and the land of the brave. This is a land that I lifted my hand and swore to protect and defend. Good afternoon. I am Colonel Jennifer Riley Collins. that the reality that this is not a reality. That translates as home to those who are privileged to be free, to benefit from the bravery of those who till the land. While tilling the land and toiling in the kitchen, sitting and then not sitting on boycotted buses, attending historically black colleges and universities, and even PWIs, sitting alone and isolated in boardrooms. Black people exercised strength, tenacity, and skills that made us astute at navigating the traps that would try to bind us. Being who we are created to be, barriers could never, they will never, they will never restrain us. We are black people and we rise. We rise despite the weight of a system designed to anchor us. We rise even when you lynch us and attempt to hobble us with undereducation. We rise when we have to fight for the fundamental right to vote. Yeah. We rise when we choose to exercise our constitutionally guaranteed right to take a knee. And then you have the audacity yeah, yeah. to place your knee on my neck. Yeah. While I am begging to breathe. And yet, we rise. Nah, we came too far. Today, I stand before you feeling the privilege and being so very proud of Macy and CJ because I had the honor and privilege of watching them grow up. I see and I hear, and I hear their unapologetic determination to hold elected officials accountable, yeah. to get folk registered and out to vote, yeah. to decrease prison populations and center public health in conversations regarding the opening of public schools, private schools. Don't get this same concern. But they are standing here fighting for our right to breathe. They are standing here very plain and simply to declare that black lives matter. I stand here looking out at the thousands of faces in this crowd, crowd and I realize that we don't ever have the privilege to stop. I, we, don't have the privilege to come off of our walls. I, we, don't have the privilege to stop standing up for justice. 
children when they start driving while black. I, we don't have the privilege to sit by and be silent. Some want to co-op and call this unrest. Well, guess what? We don't have the privilege of getting rest. I don't have the privilege because you see, I am the mother of three beautiful black men. The sister of two beautiful black men. The daughter of a black man. And because I am black, we don't have the privilege to just breathe. We can't give up now. To politicians and prosecutors, who are dismissive of our deaths, Mayor, Petal Mayor Marks, to those who would dismiss charges of those who kill us, especially in the face of national hurt, A.G. Fitch, and who dream of my death for standing in solitary in solidarity amongst this crowd. Madison prosecutor Pamela Hancock. You need to know. You need to know that we see you and we hear you. We hear your words when you try to say it's just a joke. My life They are the intentional continuation of the eight minutes and 46 seconds of hatred and racism, which is the need that has remained on the neck of black people. We know these things. I need you to know these names. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., Megar Evers,
They told me what couldn't be done. Yes, ma'am. They told me I needed help. They asked me, did I need assistance? And as we've showed you time and time again, we respectfully decline. The youth of Mississippi are the reason that we are all standing here today. Nobody else. It's the young people of Mississippi that were packing the streets of downtown Jackson, Mississippi. What I've witnessed in the past five days, let me repeat, five days Talk about it, May. have been the most awe-inspiring I've ever witnessed in the state of Mississippi. I've seen the best of Mississippi in an effort to highlight the worst. Today, I don't come to you as an organizer. I don't come to you as a young activist. I come to you as a concerned Mississippian, wondering how long she can hold on to a state that she loves with all of her heart. People are watching. Bob Moses reminded us that when you want to look at America, you got to look where? Mississippi. If Mississippi is ready for change, then everybody is ready for change. We all watched on television as a man was strangled for eight minutes in 46 seconds on the pavement of a, of a Minnesota neighborhood. And America thought that we should ask how we should feel about it. America thought that our humanity was a question. And for the past 12 days of unrest across the United States, we've answered that question. Our humanity is not up for discussion. It's not up for debate. And we will no longer beg anybody to make sure we can live a fruitful and equal life. Amen. So despite of what people have tried to paint of our peaceful demonstration, Regardless of the fear tactics that they've tried to use leading up to and now, you can have as many people as you want watching us. You can have as many dogs as you want roaming around us. But what won't happen is that you will silence us. And we are showing that right now. In just five days, we've raised enough water, enough donations, enough food, enough snacks, enough support for everybody in this crowd and then some. If that doesn't symbolize that we got us, I don't know what else does. Young people have a vision of what Mississippi can be. Young people have a vision of what America can be. And for too long, we've been put on the back burner. For too long, we've been told to just sit quiet and listen because those who are older just happen to know better. Look around you. Do they really know better? You might have noticed this picture up to the right of me. And that's of a Jackson man, Mario Clark. A paranoid schizophrenic who was beaten to death by the police department. This is the type of fight that we are fighting, even right here at home. This protest isn't just about George Floyd. This protest isn't just about Ahmaud Arbery. 
This protest goes all the way back to Emmett Till when they asked, when they told what was done to her son. And we're seeing it again and again as his mother has brought a picture to show the world what they did to her son. We can't allow our voices to get watered down with those at the top. We can't allow them to hijack our message and pass it on as if it is theirs. This is our narrative. This is our Mississippi. And this is our change to make. So as John Lewis has told us, get in trouble, but good trouble. And us packing the streets of downtown Jackson and blocking traffic is us getting in trouble, but good trouble. A lot of people have tried to tell us how we need to protest. A lot of people have tried to tell us how we can achieve our goal. Well, I'm here to tell you that nobody can tell us how to achieve our goal but ourselves. And that is the message that we want to take away from today. So even though they tried to scare you out of coming, even though they were convinced this could be nothing but what it was, we did it. It's happening, and it's done. So we thank you, Jackson. We thank you, Mississippi. And on behalf of the United States, they'll thank us in the future. It may not happen tomorrow, but it's coming. And I may not see it, and that's okay, because it's coming. What we're fighting for is near. What we're fighting for can happen, but it can't stop at today. It can't stop at this march. It can't stop with the picture. It's got to happen after. This is just a symbol of what can happen in five days when Mississippi puts its head together and says that they demand change. So we're going to keep up the fight. We're not going to let anybody get in our way, no matter the title. And we're going to march on. Thank you.